Let's start with a question. What do you think of the products from Xiaomi and Apple? Do you think they offer similar products and services or completely different? Most people would probably say that Apple phones are known for their perfect design, innovation, and are premium products, while Xiaomi phones are known for being affordable and functional. These are two different impressions that come to mind when we mention these two companies. It's no coincidence that people have different impressions of these different companies. The marketing teams of these companies are working on these impressions. There's a concept in marketing known as positioning, which, after research and selection of the target audience, seeks to answer the question of how the company is positioned in the market and what perceptions customers have of it. These two companies and others determine how they want to be perceived by customers before they enter the market. As a brief reminder, our channel already has videos on market research and target audience selection. It'll be more effective to watch these videos to better understand this video. For those who want to watch them, we'll place the links of those videos below. While doing market research, we discover whether our idea has potential in the market. Then we identify the target audience and develop a 4P marketing strategy. In addition, we'll look at the position of the product in the market. So, what is positioning? The short answer is the differentiating factors of a product or service that give it a unique perception among customers in the market. It allows a product or service or a company to have its own image in the marketplace. The question is, how do we position our business or product or service to differentiate it from competitors in the market? How can a company differentiate itself from competing companies in the market and be remembered by customers? A marketing strategy for a company and their products and services can take several different forms. Let's take a look at some cargo companies operating in the same sector. For example, one company may state in their advertising that their customer service surpasses that of their competitors. And indeed, it may be true that buyers are more satisfied with their customer service. That cargo company will differentiate itself from its competitors and be perceived by customers as having better customer service and as a result may get more customers, even if their prices, delivery speeds, etc. are the same as their competitors. It's important to note that if the company doesn't meet the expectations of higher customer service for its customers, it will have a negative effect on the company as customers will leave negative feedback about the company. This is the first strategy we emphasize regarding positioning in marketing. The second is a second positioning strategy. Perhaps that cargo company wants to position itself in the market in terms of overall service convenience rather than in terms of customer service. The service convenience positioning strategy emphasizes that this company's product or service is more convenient to use than its competitors. Some examples can include whether there are parking spaces for your car when you pick up products you ordered, or whether their website is easy to use and loads quickly. Another example is that some cargo companies have many branches in a city or region, which is a step taken for customer convenience. It allows people in those areas to pick up orders quickly without having to go to bigger cities. A third positioning strategy is price-based positioning. Simply put, one of the cargo companies may be cheaper than their competitors. There may be a group of customers for whom neither customer service, convenience, or similar factors are important. The important thing is that it's cheap. Thus, the positioning of the cargo company in the minds of potential customers in terms of low prices will give that company an advantage in the competitive market. The fourth positioning strategy is positioning by quality. In this case, the company is known in the market for its quality products. For these companies, the quality of the product or service is most important to their customers and price isn't a priority. For example, there may be a cargo company in the market that's recognized and positioned as premium in people's minds. So, even if it's expensive, everything about the company is of high quality. When the name of that company is mentioned, high quality comes to people's minds first. The fifth positioning strategy is that the product has additional features or innovation compared to other competing products. Using the example of cargo companies, a company that's new to this sector can use innovation to differentiate themselves. A good example of this positioning strategy is Tesla. When Tesla entered the market, it built its position in the market on innovative electric cars. This is why the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Tesla is innovative electric cars. Additionally, we can say that positioning doesn't end with these five strategies. There are additional strategies for positioning in the market. 
One important thing to keep in mind is that positioning isn't about what the company thinks about itself, but how customers perceive the company. The purpose of positioning is so that the customer can distinguish your business and its products and services from other competitors in the same market. Another important thing to keep in mind is that a company can differentiate itself not by only using one strategy, but by using several positioning strategies. But what steps are taken to develop the aforementioned positioning strategies? I have five steps for this. In the first step, we need to identify our product or service. You need to know the features of the product we offer. Here we have to answer a few questions about our product. For example, what problem does the product solve? Who's the target audience of the product? After answering questions about our product, we need to analyze the products on the market that may be competitors to our product. We'll see the characteristics of competing products and how they're positioned in the market. As a result, we'll see where there's a gap in market positioning. In the third step, we need to define what differentiates our product or service from others. In the fourth step, we need to write a slogan, vision, and mission that can express the different features of our product concisely to the customer. Because the customer may see your company's slogan before your company's product, you want that person to find your message unique and different in order to generate interest in your product. For example, Xiaomi's slogan is, We make technology accessible to everyone. If we take a closer look at the slogan, we'll see that the underlying message is, Xiaomi has a technological product that everyone can buy, as it's cheaper than other competitors. As we can see, Xiaomi is positioned in people's minds this way. Do you think Apple would use a slogan like this? Of course not. Apple's slogan is, Think Different. When we compare the two, we see that Apple targets a limited group of customers with its slogan. Thinking differently means being different from the majority. Companies should have short messages supporting the products they market and they should create a certain impression about those companies. In the fifth step, the determined positioning strategy should be tested. Nothing should be left to chance. The effectiveness of this positioning on a certain potential customer group should be tested, evaluated, and perfected in order to find just the right positioning strategy. In conclusion, it's important for products and services to have their own image and position in the minds of customers in a competitive market. A brand without positioning won't stand long in the market.